Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner and today's video is going to be the Q&A session that I mentioned a couple weeks ago which I'll be answering the questions you guys posted both in the description of the announcement video and on the community tab and yeah there's not a whole much else for me to go into so let's just dive into this shall we? So our first question comes from Iain XE94 who asks what do you feel Narukami next branch of support is going to be like? What do you think they will need? Getting my stuff next week and we'll find out soon myself. So the thing about Naru's is that the base deck is actually pretty solid. We just like need better grade ones, something to replace Thunderstorm Dragoon, and like a just a solid grade three. As Drill Dragon, Stinger, Recklessness, Thunderstorm, uh, and uh, Death Scythe are very good. Phoenix is absurd, obviously. Demolition Dragon's good too. Something to replace Ricky because, like, that card's eh. better ways to get at the back row. Like, I'd like to see less expensive versions of those cards that say kill something in the front row and pull up something from the back row so you can immediately attack it. And um, another card that allows you to bind in battle phase because I feel like if you really want to, like, break this deck, then you're going to have to get more ways to abuse Rising Phoenix. And maybe Bushy Road will fuck that up with Gauntlet Buster Dragon and. And yeah, make him on attack, bind something, and then you get to get more Phoenix abuse. That way you have both Drill and Gauntlet Buster Dragon doing that. And why do I say Gauntlet Buster? We'll get in that to a bit, because I think there's another question that asks me about Wave 2 Narus. And then we have Drive Check with four questions, two on the community page and two in the comments. So we'll get with the community one. What do I feel about the current... What is my current stand on Vanguard and Yu-Gi-Oh? Also, if I wanted to add something to the Vanguard anime, what would it be? We'll start with the anime aspect, and that is get better writers. I've talked about this time and time again. The show's biggest failings, in my opinion, aside from its inconsistent animation, is the fact that the the writing staff just doesn't know how to make a good show. Like, bad pacing, flat characters, waste of potential. Like, it's a different kind of fail compared to GZ, where you had the potential of a really good story, and then they just screwed it up because they can't make good villains. But Vanguard V is just bad and conveniently enough it turns out that buddy fight aces animation is coming to a close real soon so it's not like those writers are going to be doing anything anytime soon bring them over to vanguard v get them started on this tournament arc season maybe just maybe we'll see the anime return to the form that people liked which was when it was a sports anime and the sport was cards and none of this psychwalia bullshit and then as far as my stance on vanguard and Yu-Gi-Oh, standard is starting to come along quite nicely miyagi's addition to the game really really is what i think is starting to like make standard become what we wanted it to be it's unfortunate that violus the leader is just such a bad set and that uh it's gonna change i mean it will change the format with murakumo coming in and basically saying are you as good as i am no get fucked okay but like the current format we're in, as short as it will be, is probably going to be the best one that we'll have in a very long time, at least until Miyagi 2 comes out, or maybe Extra Booster 6. Is that the one with the Ozzer Dragon in it? That might also like do something, because Nova Grappler has the potential to look spicy. Same for Kagero. And Royal Palette, I'm like, eh, too. But, yeah. So, I think the Vanguard format right now is nice. It's going to suck pretty soon, especially when we have to deal with Murakumo and our Mermaid Overlords. But afterwards, we'll get back into like some good shit again. And then as far as my stance on Yu-Gi-Oh! goes, it really hasn't changed a whole lot. My biggest issue with Yu-Gi-Oh! is that it is a good game bogged down by a shitty company that is very EA-like and it's wanting to milk its player base for as much as it can. Now, you can make the argument that the vendors are the problem, or the real reason why certain cards are so pricey, but if Konami would just stop fucking short printing the good cards in your set to the point that you cannot p complete your play sets of Phantasmes from buying a case of Savage Strike, then maybe it wouldn't cost like $800 to build a top tier deck for YCS level play. Like Salaman Great came out and they're the best budget deck that we've gotten in a long while. And yes, you can build a solid Salaman Great deck for about maybe a hundred bucks. If you take the extra mile and get things like Psychic Wielder and the Lady Debuggers. But if you want to like 
really hang with the big boys. You got to get your impermanences, phantasmes, ash blossoms. Granted, ash blossoms are in the trial deck, starter deck, thank God. But Ghost Bell, no Ghost Bell being played. I no, it's not seeing as play. But Droll Lockbird that needs its reprint. Granted, the hand traps are getting reprinted as well as impermanence and dual power. But the fact that we need two reprint sets, maybe even three, if we get a Battle of Legends set. Did we have three reprint sets last year? I think we had four. The fact that we need multiple reprint sets in a year is a huge, huge problem. And once again, it comes back to fucking secret rares. What was it? What was so bad about how Breakers of Shadow handled it? You had Solemn Strike in that set. Now, granted, Solemn Strike was an expensive card because it was fucking Solemn Strike, but it's also, to my knowledge, wasn't short printed. If Solemn Strike was printed now. One, you could only get two and a half per case. And two, it'd be a $150 card. Like, the fact that Fantasme is over $100 a copy and is pretty much needed in most decks right now is just disgusting. So, again, fuck you, Konami. And then, moving on to your other two questions. For the current meta of Vanguard, what do you think about the 2D deck format? I think it's a fantastic addition. I've talked about this briefly in one of my tournament results video. I feel like the only people who really lose out on a two-deck format are the people who can only afford to play one clan. And um, I have no other way of responding to it other than I'm sorry, but that just is the way it is. But most people who play this game do usually have two decks on them. A lot of people have this, the idea of playing one clan of each gift. So I don't think it's that much of a stretch to do it. It's the closest thing we'll have to a best of three format, especially since people are so, or rather Bush Road is so adverse to it. And there are also some Nimrods out there who think that best of one is an actual viable and better format than best of three. It's like, I, I am so glad I'm actually not on Vanguardians because I'm sure I would probably lose it if I, from just simply being on there for one day from the sheer amount of shit posts that I've seen people post in cringe sections of discords and shit but back to the main topic though it's a fantastic idea it allows for some interesting deck choices too because you can either just play like an anti you could play like your two good decks or you could play a deck and then you can play the anti deck for what your opponent will bring in after you lost to them like they beat you and they, they switch their deck and you switch to the deck that beats that deck and then you switch to your other deck yeah, I think that's how that works. But yeah, like right now, if I were to go to it, I would play Neo Nectar as my main. And then since that loses to Protect, I'd have Narukami as my secondary deck. Or no, wait. No, no, no. It's the other way around. I would I would have, let's see. I would have Neo Nectar. Yeah, yeah, I would have Naros as my main. And then because that loses to Force, I could probably bring in Neo Nectar, which beats down most Force clans outside of Rural Paladins. Yeah. I think that's how it would work. I would work. Yeah. So, but you get what I'm getting at. Like, you could do some really neat stuff. And as far as, oh yeah, I forgot to give my thoughts on premium format in the earlier question. And in that regard, premium, premium is a fantastic format that's unfortunately ruined by things like Azel and the upcoming Potpourri shit, as well as the upcoming Murakumo nonsense. But you have those bad apples, and otherwise though, fantastic open and in my honest opinion more skillful format too like there's just much more you can do in premium and then lastly for the anime which anime are you currently watching and what are your thoughts on it so the thing is i realize now that i haven't really been watching a lot of anime ever since goblin slayer ruby volume 6 shut up i've been watching that series since the beginning and even though it's become progressively worse with each volume uh Actually, I don't know if I want to watch Volume 7. Like, I was really hoping 6 would have done better than five, Volume 5, and it did, to be fair, but uh, these th recent three volumes definitely do not hold up nearly as well to the first three. And then, the like, Goblin Slayer is Goblin Slayer. Like, I'm, re I'm really sad that it came to an end, but uh, there was only so much they could do with the material they had going. I know there's going to be a second season at some point, and I'm super excited for that. And... Yeah, like, ever since those two finished up, it's like, huh, I'm not actually not watching a lot because I'm just really watching Vanguard V for the purpose of reviewing it, and I am watching Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains because it's just 
something I like. I mean, even then, I've kind of fallen behind on that because, surprise, surprise, I've actually been more focused on my Steam backlog in the last couple of months than anything else. It really started with CrossCode back when I did the last Q&A. Yeah, 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 it started with that. And then once I beat that, I started, I moved on to Guru Min because my brother-in-law got, got, gave it to me as a Steam gift. I started playing that for a bit. And then I remembered, oh shit, Trails of Cold Steel's PlayStation 4 re-release is coming up really soon. I need to go beat the Sky Trilogy. And those are not small games. The first one took me 50 hours to beat. The second one, I'm almost done and I'm at 74 hours. So these are big games. And I still got part three. So I've just been on this huge JRPG binge for the past month and a half to two months. And that, and there's also Pokemon Guy. I did that too during Christmas time. Or around that time. So, like, I've just been on this RPG binge, and it is not stopping anytime soon. Because once I get done Sky 3rd, I'm either going to be working on Devil May Cry 5 or Trails of Cold Steel uh, Decisive Edition. And that's going to be a long game in itself. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good while before I actually get the time to actually sit down and watch anime. Because, like, my thought process has been I could watch x anime that's going on right now or i could just continue plugging it out with x jrpg i'm currently on because i really enjoy these type of games so yeah there is that it's not though that i don't have anything i uh, that i don't want to watch anytime soon because there's a couple things that are on my to-do list i've got sssss grid i think i said that was one too many s's in there i've got the Gridman anime on a tab on my other browser so when i get a chance i will watch that and i've also heard good things about rise of the shield hero is that what it's called i believe so it's just i just know it's shield hero i've heard good things about that show and i do want to check that out and i've also heard good things about uh what is it i what is it called it's a high school anime that involves two Sundere main characters you've got the guy who grew up from nothing and you've got the witch, uh, the rich girl and they're both members of the student council I think the girl wears a red ribbon and they both wear black uniforms and there's like some pink haired moya blob who acts as the uh, in between with them but they're both Sundere and they're both trying to get the other to, to admit that they have a crush on the other and they're doing all of these harebrained schemes to try and make that happen and you've got the moya blob acting as the straight man in between it's supposed to be really funny and it's been like years since I've watched a show like that so I figured fuck it why not you probably know what I'm talking about though hell I'm sure everyone who's like been like keeping up on anime this season knows what show I'm talking about and will probably comment on it down below but anyway, that's all four of Drive Check's questions, and that's probably half the video in itself. Lizm Dimarasi asks, what are your plans for 2019 in Vanguard and Yu-Gi-Oh? Now, does he mean what kind of content do I plan on putting up for the channel, or just what do I want to like pick up for decks? Because as far as Yu-Gi-Oh goes, I picked up the Salamander Great Structure deck, because of course I would. Like, that deck, that structure deck is money, and I also kind of got rid of my secret and super ash blossoms, so I needed to replace them. Plus, the sound migrate deck's kind of good, so I also got rid of Sky Striker for another project that, that will soon be coming up. So I do have some Yu-Gi-Oh decks that I want to put up here, at least one in particular. And as far as Vanguard goes, obviously I'll be putting up the Narakami Spice in good time, and then... I also recently picked up a Murakumo Core. I just need to get two more Zombakus, and that deck is done. I also have a Link Joker extra deck, but I'm not sure if I really want to be playing premium Link Joker anymore. As turns out, the leader Messiah is the way to go, and I don't want to go after Messiah stuff, so I'll probably just offload the, the leader strides that I picked up. Oh well. Uh, so like, those are my immediate deck projects, and as far as like content goes... I don't think I'm going to be really doing anything that I haven't been doing already. So deck profiles, tournament results, and the occasional bit of gameplay from Cardfight Area. And maybe Dueling Book, as I might have actually found a way to get it to work now. I was having problems running it on my main browser, which is Google Chrome and Opera. I also use that as my other browser. And I didn't want to use Internet Explorer for Dueling Book. I'm like, no, I, I just hate Internet Explorer. But it looks like I can finally get Dueling Book to work on my Chrome browser. So maybe, just maybe, I'll start like take, doing what I used to do with the old Dueling Network videos. Which reminds me, 
I think I might actually make a best of, or at least my top 10 favorite Dueling Network videos, because I did that one Dueling Network re-upload of Ruinbringer, and I liked how that worked. So I might just take, yeah, 10 of my favorite Dueling Network uploads and put them into one single package. And uh, it'll be it would be interesting because, like, the way, like, there is a definite change of how I played the game back then and how I do now and how the game was in general. Like, Mega Monkey and I were talking about it a long time ago how in the Ruinbringer video... I was actually able to play Pot of Duality and pass with no monsters and not get blown the fuck out. Like, it was crazy. Like, open board, one set, my opponent didn't kill me. It was crazy. And he was playing Six Samurai, too. So, yeah, that was a that was a thing. In any case, though, so, like, yeah, those would be my immediate plans. And then, uh, I just... We'll play it as, uh, I also just kind of just wing it on the spot. So if, like, I get a crazy idea, I might just act on it as I am wont to do. That was kind of what led to the tournament results video in the first place. So that's for that. Um, there's a region, yeah, there's regionals coming up too for Yu-Gi-Oh! that I want to attend this year. So if I can, I'd like to do a vlog of that, but I highly doubt it because I don't know what the policy is on that anymore. So hope that answered your questions. Max Lu Z asks, what do you think of these decks? OTT Witches, Nubatama, Huchigiri, Congo, and Narakama with Great Composure and Vermilion. Um, are you asking from a budget perspective or from a playability perspective? From a budget perspective, they are okay, I guess. I'm not really the best person to ask, though, for opinions on budget decks because I don't think like a budget player. And I don't deck build from a budget player because, in my opinion, Vanguard is still reasonably inexpensive to build decks for, unless you're playing Paladins. In that case, like I believe that $100 to $200 for a fully complete deck is actually quite fair compared to shit like Yu-Gi-Oh! Where, again, we have $800 main decks, looking at you, Danger Thunder Dragon, and recently we had, like, what, $500 Sky Striker decks? Like, compared to those decks... Vanguard is still relatively inexpensive, at least for now. Royal Paladin players are going to be crying, though, after Extra Booster 6 comes out and they end up needing four VRs in their deck or something like that. Meanwhile, here I'm sitting with my Wave 1 Narakama going, must be nice having four waves of support. In any case, though, so from a budget perspective, I can't really say much other than Nubatama is probably the most playable of those bunch, as, Kuji -Ku, as the hand attack deck as a whole is just better than Magatsu. But as we've seen by results, though, Nubotama also just did fuck all. Now, from a competitive standpoint, all three of these decks listed are just bad. There's a better OTT deck in Imperial Daughter, and hell, there's an even a better secondary OTT deck in Magus, and Narakama really only has one good build, which is the Titanix Bros build. Um, yeah, I... And, like... Great Composure Dragon itself is just not a good card. Like I would not play, especially since it doesn't, and it doesn't work with Vermilion that well either, because Vermilion kills stuff in battle phase, whereas Great Composure Dragon kill wants to get power buffs before battle phase. If Great Composure just simply had a continuous buff for every empty front row rearguard circle, I think the card would have been much, much, much better than it actually is. But yeah, TLDR, those decks are bad unless you're playing budget. In that case, I guess they're okay. And our last question comes from Dragon Nexus, who asks, Since we know that Narukami Wave 2 is coming this summer, what do you think the new boss unit could be, and what kind of skill would you want it to have? So, the obvious answer to that would be Eradicators, with Gauntlet Buster Dragon being the VR, and then Dragonic Descendant being the Triple Rare and Origin Rare. And, and hopefully, it would be in that order, because, let's be honest, Dragonic Descendant's artwork will be badass no matter how it's done, but can you imagine OR Dragonic Descendant? I can, and it would look beautiful. And then Gauntlet the Buster Dragon would be the VR because it's Naoki's Narakami and Naoki's boss monster with Eradicators was Gauntlet the Buster Dragon. It was, after all, the card that he went back to for G-Series when he fought Chrono, as opposed to the much better Brawler deck at the time. Seriously, why didn't he play Big Bang against Chrono? It would have been great to see Turbo in action, but I digress. There is that. And as far as Gauntlet Buster's kind of skill goes, I'll actually I'll theorize I'll give you guys I'll pitch a potential Gauntlet Buster and Dragonic Descendant skill, because this is stuff I've been brainstorming with other people in a Discord before. So for Dragonic Descendant, it would be Vanguard, Rearguard, once per turn, Soul Blast 1, get 10k. 
like Dragonic Overlord, and then auto Vanguard, Rear Guard. At the end of the battle, your Vanguard attacked. If it did not hit, cost, Counterblast 1, discard 2 cards, stand this unit, and if it is on Vanguard, it gets Drive minus 1 and Critical plus 1. Think on that one and one of the things you can do with that. And then Gaunt the Buster Dragon, I think, wouldn't honestly be that much different from his original one. You just would make him less counterblast heavy and give him guard restrict. Just a simple matter of on attack, counterblast one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards in the front row, bind it, and your opponent cannot normal call sentinels from hand to guardian circle during this battle. And also, continuous vanguard circle. If you have a grade 3 Eradicator in your soul, every time you bind on your opponent's card by an effect, he gets plus 5 and a crit. It's just a simple matter of on attack, bind with Guard Restrict, because of course everyone wants Guard Restrict, because Guard Restrict is disgusting in standard. Now that is a discussion topic for another point. Maybe I'll actually make a poll on that, which is what's more broken in standard, Guard Restrict or restanding, because in the old days you'd want restanding, but now these days everyone just wants everything to be a waterfall clone, and you can thank uh, waterfall for that. So there is that possibility, but here's the really, really, really big brain theory we have here: armor break dragon. If you break armor break dragon the new boss monster you get to recreate that epic scene from the link joker anime where naoki goes all in against suiko and just crit sacks the shit out of her with like what was it a four crit armor break dragon it was one of the it was one of the most manly things you'd seen in that anime for a very long time and it has not it hasn't been duplicated since like well since i coincidentally gus blaster dragon who the way he acts is very gauntlet buster dragon like but Armor Break Dragon would be a pretty neat throwback. I'm just hoping to God that they don't decide to meme us with Dungaree, but that's also possible. Then again, Dungaree might be made a rare. I also think there's a very reasonable chance that if they go the Eradicator route, that Vowing Sword Dragon would come back and he worked very similarly to... What's-his-face? Detonic Stinger Dragon. That's a, I think I'll make a poll on that too after this video goes up is which boss monster would you guys like to see for Wave 2 Naros? Either way though, I am expecting good things from it because Wave 1 Naros were so well done that nothing short of that standard and better would be disappointing. Like I'm expecting them to do well. Like you made Murakumo insane with their second wave of support. I'm expecting some level of stupidity out of Naros. If anything else, I'm expecting Rising Phoenix to finally get broken for the card that it actually is. And that's all I can really say for that. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a pleasure answering your questions. The next one I do for this will probably be close to the summer. Yeah, I think I'm going to basically do two of these per year going forward. So, or three per year? Yeah, so next one will be June, and then after, not June, but like it'll be close to the summer, and then the one after that will be in the fall. And then, yeah. And as far as like musical compilations go, I think I'll just make those once a year, and it'll just be like a, a mashup of all the background themes I've used in the videos throughout the entirety of 2019. And yeah, those, those are like, huh. So those are some plans for this channel, just not in the Yu Gi Oh! Vanguard sense, but. Uh, yeah, that's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this again. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, this is Boost39, jacking out.